a mystery person. My name? Hmm, what should I say? I'd hate to get your hopes up only to let you down. Uh, master. Why would I get my hopes up? A uh, mysterious person. You want me to help you get out of here, right? Master. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Mysterious person. Of course you do. It's only natural. But I can't. I really am just as much of a prisoner as you are. I don't have any magecraft or skills or noble phantasms that could get us out of these cells. Just a whole lot of nothing. Master, are you okay? That sounds pretty rough. Mysterious person. Hmm, I guess I'm technically doing alright, but... Well, uh, you know how there are some noble phantasms that involve blowing yourself up. That's basically me right now. I could probably do something about the situation if I unleashed all my power at once. But my intuition's telling me that now is not the time to pull that trigger. Master? Well, in the meantime, could tell me your name now. Mysterious person? Huh? You mean I haven't yet? Uh, oh man, I haven't. And I still don't know yours either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we've been talking the whole day and I didn't even realize we're technically strangers. Wait, it's been an entire day? Hey, are you okay? Aren't you hungry? No, wait. You need water. Master, I think I might be in a worse shape than I thought. Mysterious person. Oh crap, you're not kidding. Hey, guard anyone? This girl needs help. Master, I can't last much longer. Narration. Before me, I saw a vast wasteland of endless white. Every trace of humanity had been erased. We no longer had any hope for survival, let alone of turning the tide. Nothing we tried even had the slightest effect. In this wasteland, I searched through old records like a raccoon pawing through garbage. I managed to find an old motorcycle with barely enough fuel for one-way trip and began riding across the blinding white wasteland. It's just... nothing about this makes sense. There are so many unanswered questions. If I'm going to die, I at least want some answers. Master. Was that a dream? Somehow? I don't think so. Mysterious person. Oh, are you awake now? Are you okay? Can you get some water down? Master. Thank you. Mysterious person. Oh my, how polite. What a good girl you are. But where are my manners? I still haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Salome, daughter of Herodos. Nice to meet you, Master of Chaldea. Um, you must be hungry, right? Well, there's fruit if you like that. We have apples, oranges, and plenty of others too. I really like oranges myself. We didn't have them when I was alive, but they're great. They remind me of the sun. Salome. Oh good, I'm glad you like them. But this still isn't enough, is it? You probably want meat and fish and bread and stuff too, don't you? 
I'll bring you some later if you do something for me. Is that okay? Master, as long as it's something I can do. Salome. Oh, yes, of course. That's totally fine with me. Okay, uh, so, um, I want you to tell me about yourself. Because, you see... Every servant here is the same. They're always fighting and killing and fighting and killing, and when they're not doing that, they're winning and losing, too. I guess they also came from stories and legends, as people who forged their own path through their times. Oh yes, they're all really wonderful people. They're all super amazing, too. It's no wonder each of them made history. It's a shame there aren't many like uh, Jokanon, but they're still all heroes. Maybe there are a lot of heroes like Jokanon in the reinstatement realm. Chase, noble, and holy. Oh, but I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry. You're not like them, are you? You're not a hero. You're not a servant. Really, you don't seem amazing at all. So please, tell me about yourself. Please. I just want to hear about you. I don't care what. Master. Hmm, you really don't care what? Salome. I really don't. Even if it's boring, I don't mind. I won't cut your head off or anything, okay? Master. Well, in that case... Salome. Oh my, <laughs> that was fascinating. I had no idea something like that happened in America. Lord Edison sounds wonderful. Lord Jekyll of England sounds adorable too. Still, neither of them seem very Jokanon-ish. <laughs> Mysterious person. Hey, you there, the servant. Salome, yes, what is it? Mysterious person. Weren't you supposed to be getting her something to eat? That master, I mean? Salome. Oh, you're right. I am, aren't I? Hang on, I'll be right back. Let's see, I just I need meat, fish, bread. Mysterious person. Hey, you sure you're okay? Uh, master, I'm still pretty hungry, but aside from that... Mysterious person. I don't mean that, I mean with Salome. I mean, you know sh what she is, right? She's a berserker, an innocently cruel girl who wanted John the Baptist's head. She's like a walking disaster in servant form. She might decide to kill you at any moment. Doesn't that scare you? Master? Not right now. Now. Mysterious person. That's so. Man, you're kind of badass in your own way, aren't you? Oh, I really mean that, you know. Yeah, I wasn't being facetious or anything. Hmm, is that Salome? No, it's not. Ah, damn it. Listen, Galdan, don't worry about looking bad here. Just whatever you do, don't fight back. Zongju? There you are. Been a while, hasn't it? Anyway, it's time for your torture. Master, you have to torture me to execute me? Zongju? If you were going to execute someone, wouldn't you want to find out what useful things they know first? Mysterious person. Hey, you sure this is a good idea? Sure seems like a terrible one to me. Zongju? Hmm? Who said that? Oh, it's you. Does that mean you're willing to be tortured in her place? 
mysterious person. If it'll help, gladly. Zhongju. My, my, not even a moment's hesitation. I'm afraid that would take all the fun out of it, though. Besides, I have my own thoughts on humanity. You don't mind indulging an old man in his unscrupulous hobbies, do you? Though I'm afraid your answer will change nothing. Salome. Stop that, Grandfather Zongju. You can't torture her, okay? No way, no how. Zongju. Salome? What are you doing here? Salome. I'm bringing her food. I just know she still has so many more wonderful stories to share. But she won't be able to tell me any if you torture and break her. Yeah. Songju. Well now. Salome. You don't have to torture her, right, Gramps? Songju. Uh, all right. Besides, Kremel seems to have a soft spot for you. This at least makes a good excuse. Sorry for scaring you, young lady. If you start feeling sick, try dissolving this charm into water and drinking it. Well, see you later. Alright, I almost forgot to tidy up. Salome. Oh my, you even cleaned up after me, Gramps? Thank you so much. Are you okay? Did you lose your appetite? Master. No, I sure didn't. Salome. Wow, how ferocious. That's wonderful. Make sure you eat up so you have plenty of energy, okay? Mysterious person. You know, I'm not especially hungry myself, but I couldn't help but overhear what sounds like a delicious meal. Hey, what are you eating? Master. Meat, fish, bread. A mysterious person. I don't suppose you could be a little more specific, could you? Salome. Let's see. Um, I think the meat is called roast beef. The fish was caught at the lake. I don't know what it's called. I heard it was yummy, though, so it's probably fine. I chose a bread that wasn't too hard, but aside from that... Mysterious person. Got it. Thanks, lady. Salome. You're the captured servant, huh? I can only hear your voice, but you seem very heroic. Mysterious person. You can tell that from my voice. Salome. Mm, more or less. I bet you're going to be an amazing hero one day. Are you an incredible adventurer or something? Mysterious person. Mm, you're kind of right and kind of not. Besides, as you can see, I've been stuck in here watching the days go by ever since you guys caught me. Salome. Is that what you think? Are you sure you couldn't just leave whenever you wanted? Mysterious person. Oh, well, I guess it's technically possible, sure. But if I did, then it'd all be over. Salome. Hmm. I'm curious to know more about you, too, but right now, Woki is more important. Hmm. Important. Valuable. No, neither of those sound right. Anyway, would you tell me more stories, Woki? You can keep eating, of course. No point worrying about manners or etiquette here. Master. And that's why Uruk was so tough. Salome. Oh my. Oh my, oh my. That was wonderful. Just absolutely wonderful. You lived a very different life a long time ago, huh? I don't think us servants can really enjoy meals properly since we don't actually get hungry. But that Uruk food you mentioned has my mouth watering just thinking about it. In fact, for the first time in forever, I think I actually feel like eating something myself. 
Master. Oh, sorry. I already ate it all. Salome. Oh my. <laughs> That's fine. It's perfectly alright. I'm happy you ate so much. I'll bring you more food tomorrow. When I do, let's eat together, okay? Mysterious person. Hey, any chance I can get in on this meal action? Salome. Nope, you can stay put, Mr. Hero. Mysterious person. <laughs> ah, fine, whatever. Master. Are you sure you can't let him join us? Salome. Hmm. I'm sure. All right. I'd better get going. See you tomorrow, Wilkie. Master. See you tomorrow, Salome. Salome. Hmm. Bye. Mysterious person. Nice job. I'm sure the meal helped, but are you doing okay beyond that? Master. Totally. Mysterious person. I see. You know, I'm pretty sure humans are still supposed to eat three meals a day, right? Looks like Salome forgot that bit. Master. Th that's okay. I can hold out till tomorrow. Mysterious person. Plus, you've still got water. By the way, just to make sure. Do you know Salome's story? Master. Not really. Mysterious person. Well, want me to go over it real quick then? Master. If you don't mind, that'd be great. Mysterious person. Alright. That said, everything I know about her is second hand, but at least it's better than nothing. Salome is the adopted daughter of King Herod Intapos. She's a princess, basically. One day, she fell head over heels for a prophet named Jokanon, or John the Baptist, depending on who you ask. If she would just fallen for the guy, that'd be one thing. Nobody could have blamed her for that. If it had ended happily with them getting married or tragically with rejection, it'd have been pretty unremarkable. Instead, Salome wanted Jokan on severed head on a platter. Nothing else would satisfy her. I guess it was some kind of weird fetish or something? Or maybe her love was so overwhelmingly strong it compelled her to keep him forever as her own? I wasn't there, so I can't really say. But either way, she kept begging King Herod for his head, and eventually, he agreed. And so Jakanon's head was cut off and presented to Salome as a gift. Eventually, Salome herself came to be executed too. Anyway, that's the long and short of it. Master, maybe so, but... Mysterious person? Hmm? Master? Today, Salome saved me from torture. Mysterious person? Good point! Whatever she may have done in the past, she did save you today. I still think it'd be smart to keep her past in mind when dealing with her, though. Feelings can be many, many things, but predictable isn't typically one of them. Sometimes they can be so intense that they even make you ruin something you care deeply for. Anyway, now that you're all fed and hydrated, the only thing left to do for the day is go to sleep. Master. Hang on, there's something else we need to do first. Mysterious person. Hmm? Oh, right, my name. <laughs> Sorry about that. But everything that's happened, I guess it kept slipping my mind. Okay, let me finally introduce myself then. I'm. 
Um, Seton. Master. Seton, as in the author of Wild Animals I Have Known? Seton? Uh, yep, that's me. Master? Did you ever fight when you were alive? Seton? Sure I did. I fought, uh, dung beetles and stuff. Master. That wasn't Seton. That was Fabre. Seton. Bah! Details. Anyway, once again, I'm glad to have met you, Wilkie. Grimmild. Salome is taking a liking to that human? Zongju? I believe so. She brought her the meal I forgot to prepare for her, and now she's seemingly all she could talk about. Grimmild. Well, that's fine. That she's taking a liking to her only makes her death that much more likely. Zongju. You're talking about the Jokanan incident from when she was alive. Kermil. No, I'm talking about the servant who's materialized right now. The thing about Salome, Zhangju, is that everyone she cares for eventually starts to look like Jokanan's her. She starts to believe they're having a lovely conversation even if they're talking past each other. She may not see her as Jokanan right now, but it's only a matter of time. And when she does, she won't be able to hold herself back. Zongju? Hmm, does that mean we can leave her to her own devices then? Krimil. Oh, I think it would still be prudent to have a servant or two stand guard. But when she inevitably starts to believe she is Jokanan, that will be the end of her. Let's set that aside, though, Zhangju. What about the other matter we discussed? Zhangju, follow me and I'll show you. Grimmild, very good. Will it be ready for the final battle? Zhangju, of course. Grimmild, then we'll just have to wait and see if that battle does in fact take place on the day you predicted. Zhangju, that's what my fortune said, and it hasn't steered me wrong yet. Grimmild, well, you're not the only one. Most of the servants with prognostication skills have said the same thing. I suppose that's just how predicting the future works. Zhangju, indeed. Grimmild, all right, I also want you to take care of this. Songju. Written orders. Hmm. Caster class. Lord Songju. Songju. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy reading? Caster class. I find it hard to believe that you know who truly understands how incredible this research is. Zhangju. True, she probably doesn't. Caster class. That, no, he is far beyond any normal servant's capabilities. This could affect the entire universe. Zhangju. And? Why are you telling me this? Caster class. I think you should overthrow you know who and take the throne for yourself. Songju. Oh ho, do you now? That's quite an entertaining idea. So you want me to use our research to rebel against her? Caster class. We're already rebelling against proper human history. What's one more rebellion on top of that? Songju. Mm, a fair point. You once served the nation the Lu family established in Ba Shu, yes? I'm told you also practiced sorcery in secret before proudly unveiling it to the world. Caster class, I did, sir. Zhang Shu, then I have just one question for you. 
What do you think of Queen Grimmel? No, wait, let me clarify. Do you accept her as our rightful leader? Or failing that, do you recognize her power? Class or class? No, sir. I don't think she's proven herself in either regard. Songju. I see. Then I have no use for you. Caster class. But why? Songju. I don't care whether you're willing to follow her leadership or not, and as heroes, we're all egotistical to varying degrees. But what I cannot abide is a failure to recognize her power. It tells me that you're too much of a fool to accurately gauge another's ability. You may be dying, but listen carefully, Caster. Krimhild is bluntly a monster. Recall what happened after her lover was killed? Her desire for revenge alone led her to seduce the king of a foreign land, muster troops, and instigate a major rebellion. She even trampled her own brother in pursuit of her vengeance. She used the demonic blade she never should have been able to wield to behead her enemy. Yes, she may have been killed shortly thereafter in punishment for her own actions. But I suspect she only allowed that to happen because she didn't care what became of her after she took her revenge. Whether she lived or died didn't matter to her as long as she killed the one she so loathed. She is a berserker, to be sure, but one blessed with intellect and cunning. How do you fail to see that? Why couldn't you understand? She's been aware of your desire to rebel against her for some time now. She even told me to dispose of you on the written order she gave me shortly before you showed up. Caster class. That can't be. Zhongju. Why did you think she wouldn't catch on? Would have been one thing if you'd kept your thoughts to yourself, but the moment you began preparing, you'd failed. And despite your preparations, you had no contingency plan. You could have contacted like-minded comrades, you could have planned an escape in case things went wrong. You could have negotiated for either of the other realms to take you and your fellow rebels in, but you didn't do any of those things, did you? Caster class. I... Zhongju. You underestimated the queen when you should have been afraid of her. No one in their right mind would aid such a rebellion. Songju. Good grief. Tell me, everyone. Do I really seem that untrustworthy? Do I just come across as a scheming old man who will betray his queen the first chance he gets? Assassin class. Well... Yes, absolutely. Archer class? I'm honestly amazed you haven't betrayed her yet. Saber class? Sir, I still can't believe you haven't betrayed her, sir. Songju. Do you think all old men are alike or something? Well, no matter. Alright, let's take this thing for its 28th test drive, shall we? Holmes. I can know what you know, I can know what you try to hide, and while you were on the subject, I can even know what you've unconsciously forgotten. Do we understand each other? Archer class? Yes. Gordon. Did he just brainwash that guy? Holmes. That gives us the general coordinates for both the Revenge Realm and the Reinstatement Realm. By extension, we now know where the Righteous Realm must be as well, at least roughly. Here, this place right in the middle of the Singularity. Heading north from here will take us to the Revenge Realm and east to the Reinstatement Realm. Which must mean the Righteous Realm is in the southwest. According to that archer, the other two realms have been sending in tons of scouts but they're no closer to learning anything about the Righteous Realm capital. 
Indeed, it seems the Righteous Realm has put up all manner of bounded fields to bolster its already considerable natural defenses. Kodak. So how we get past all that without a caster? Holmes. Oh, I have an idea or two, but first, let me ask you something, Kodak. Kodak. Hmm? Holmes. How do you feel about rock climbing? Kodak. Feel like I already don't love where this is going. Gordoff. Oh, you'll be fine, Kodak. You've always said you like rock, haven't you? Kodak. The music, you moron. What the hell kind of pathetic dad joke was that? Gordoff. Hmm. Mash. Um, Kodak? Our new director is very sensitive to remarks about his age and his parental temperament. Da Vinci. I still say you'd look way younger if you just shaved your mustache off. Gordoff. And I still say no! Kodak. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Holmes. That's the spirit! Kodak. Damn it, if only we had tools with us or something. Holmes, have you got a knife you can lend me? Holmes, I do indeed. Kodak. Okay, we'll need a f way to keep warm in rock climbing equipment. I can start by changing this into an ice axe. Okay, that should do it. Gordoff. Hmm, I dare say Wilkie could stand to learn some survival magecraft as well. Holmes. <laughs> I expect she would be delighted. Gordoff. Well, I suppose asking you to share your magecraft secrets would be too much. Kodak. What? This? These are just cheap tricks. Hell, if you want me to teach them to her, I'll write them all down in a how-to guide for her. Holmes. Excellent. Now let's be on our way. Given this singularity's overall area, I expect we can reach the capital within two days. From there, it will simply be up to us to convince them that it is in their interest to rescue Miss Wilkie. Come, let's hurry. Kodak, yep. <laughs>